Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Is God good or is God good? Praise the Lord. I'm so glad for his provision, aren't you? Amen. There's nothing like the Lord that we serve. I'm glad tonight that we're not serving God in, in, in a dead type religion that where you cannot feel God. There are a lot of churches out there and people never feel God when they go to church. And us that can feel God in the house of the Lord, oh, I'm telling you, we, we have got to be grateful. And it's so easy to take for granted. But God is a healer today. Yes, he is. He's a healer today. Uh, now, we're just going to get right into the word of the Lord here. And, and you that are on that are from CRC Christian Revival Center, where we attend in Maryville, Indiana. Of course, right now, uh, we're not attending. We're just uh, watching services online and participating that way. But uh, you that are from CRC, do me a favor and post the website and the uh, the Facebook page right here, the Christian Revival Center Facebook page, if you'll put that on uh, as a post for those that don't know about it, and also put the website, which is www.christianrevivalcenter.org. Okay, christianrevivalcenter.org. If somebody would do that for me, amen. We're going to talk about tonight, healing is promised and documented. You no, know, we're going to talk about the promise of healing and healing in the Bible because healing, yes, is in the Bible. It's not just for those that were that lived two thousand years ago that uh, that were under the teachings of Jesus or the teachings of the apostles. There are a lot of people that believe when the last apostle died, the miracles stopped. Did you know that teaching is out there? They've come too late to tell me. They've come too late to tell me that there are no miracles today because I've personally been healed by God without the aid of a doctor. I'm not criticizing the help of a doctor, not at all, but I'm just saying I've been healed by God without any help from a doctor, thank the Lord. Some of you have too. Many of you on this video tonight can attest that you have been healed by the power of God and you felt his healing touch, you may have had pain racking your body, and that pain just dissipated or maybe disappeared all at once. Maybe there was a sickness or disease, some type of an infirmity in your body. You received prayer. You claimed the promise. Maybe you were instantly healed, or you had some kind of a recovery, because it does say in Mark chapter 16, Jesus said that we should lay hands, that the believers should lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover shall recover future tense. Amen. So the healing is documented. It's promised. I'm going to show you that in the word of the Lord. Sometimes we receive an instant miracle. Thank you for doing that. Sometimes we receive an instant miracle, and sometimes we receive a progression of healing that may happen over a period of days or weeks. Now, I think we would all prefer that instant healing. Okay, it doesn't always happen. But what you have to be careful about is when you're claiming a healing and you've got prayer for a sickness or disease to be healed, if it's not instantaneous, if it's not an instant miracle of healing, you have to be careful to, to not lose your faith and say, well, the Lord didn't do it. Maybe it's not the will of God for me. You cannot think like that. You've got to hold on to your faith because that healing could manifest before you go to bed. It could manifest in the morning. But you've got to hold on to your face. It could manifest in a couple days or a week. But if you hold on to your faith and confess that, yes, in fact, I am healed. Say that right now. I know I can't hear you, but say it out loud. I am healed. And you that will, type it in. I am healed. Not I'm going to be healed. There is a difference. There's a difference. I am healed. Type that in right there and say that out loud. Document that right now. Type it in and say it, I am healed. So we're going to talk about healing is promised and documented. So let's talk about the promise. All right, so in Matthew chapter 8, verse 7, looking uh, into the King James Version uh, of the Bible, uh, Jesus made just a statement to a man that had a very ill servant at home. His, his servant was very, very sick. 
And he came to Jesus asking Jesus to heal his servant. Je listen to what Jesus said in verse 7, Matthew 8, 7. He said, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. If you'll notice when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus never, say never, say never. Type it in, never. Jesus never turned anyone away. If you'll share this with me right now. Share that on Facebook. Share this broadcast on Facebook, this live. When you share it, hundreds more will see it. Amen. And we're going to send out faith, and we're going to believe that people are going to be healed today. So Jesus never turned anyone away when they asked for healing. Now, it's possible to ask for healing and not get healed. And sometimes we're not appropriating our faith correctly. There's times that I don't appropriate my faith or I'm not believing. There are and there are times we may not uh, believe like we should. All right. So Jesus said, I will come and heal them. That's a beautiful promise right there. Look at Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. If you would grab your Bibles, I want you to follow along because I'm going to show you some things that you may or may not have ever seen. And it's going to really be a blessing to you. And I know that for sure. All right, Exodus 15, 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, there's conditions here that God is giving. And will do, will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments. Do right. Give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. God said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have put upon the Egyptians. All right. When they came out of Egypt and God did all those plagues, God said, I'm not going to put them on you, but I want you to, in other words, as Jesus said, abide in me and I in you, and you shall ask what you will. But he says to, to give heed to the commandments, to keep his statutes, do what is right in his eyes. And he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Watch this, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now that is a present tense situation. He didn't say, I will heal you. Okay. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Something that we can count on. Now we look at that present tense now, we learned in English class in school, high school, and we learned that there's a present tense, future tense, and past tense. All right? Healing is never in the future tense. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to come. Okay, and we looked at Matthew 8 and 7. I will come and heal him. That was a promise. He was going there in the flesh, okay, to heal him. But look at this documentation here, this I, in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. All right. Present tense. Healing right now with conditions. God put conditions to the children of Israel. And I was preaching some years ago and I was out of state. I believe I was in Missouri, if I remember correctly. And I was in a church had never been there before and never met the pastor before. But um I was to preach one service. Uh, I believe it was on a Sunday. Uh, maybe 125, 150 people in that congregation. I, and, and we're going back all oh, by some years now. Um, but I preached on faith that day, and I, I preached on healing. And we didn't lay hands on anyone, but we just preached the word. And we said, everybody that wants to be healed, that you've got a sickness, a pain, something in your body, I want you to stand at the end of the message, at the end of the sermon, and we're going to pray. I'm just going to pray a mass prayer for everybody at once. There was a number of people that stood across the congregation, I don't remember, maybe 8, 10, 12, 15 people, whatever it was, that, that had a situation going on in the body. There were a number of people that were healed. I don't remember all the details, but one young lady stand, stands out to me. After we had prayed, and then I, I had a custom to always ask people to stand and testify if they had pain and the pain was gone. 
they had symptoms and the symptoms was gone. I had that customs and many times people would stand and they would begin to tell of the miracles and it would build faith. It would build faith. And so one young lady stood after we had did that and she might have been, I don't know, 18 or 20 years old, 22 probably at the most, wasn't very old. But I remember over on my right side, she stood. She said, for a couple of years, I have been having a problem in my jaw. She says, when I move my jaw, she was doing like that. She says, my jaw pops. And, and she says, it hurts all the time. She says, it never stops. It always pops when I move it like that. And it's been doing this for a couple of years. But she said, when we prayed that prayer, and like I said, no one touched her. But she received faith by the word of the Lord that, that day. She says, when we prayed, that pain stopped. She, she said, I'm looking. She's demonstrating, right? She's moving her jaw. She said, my jaw's not popping. She said, I am in no more pain. And this is the first time she said that this has happened. I'm, I'm without pain. And, and she was just so excited that God had healed there, healed her right there in a little simple prayer, a simple little prayer. Amen. And, and it's so simple. We make it difficult sometimes. Uh, I, I'm, if I'm not careful, I make it difficult. And sometimes we as believers, when we're hearing the word, we, you know, we could make it difficult. We, we, we're, we're trying to consider something to happen that God does not want to do. And, but God many times will be just so simple in the way he's going to heal you. And God, like I said, he can heal you so easy tonight. From my voice to your ear, live or Maybe you're, somebody would watch this six months from now, years later, could watch this and hear the faith of the Word of God and be healed immediately, instantly. I was preaching here uh, not too far from home here, um, again, some years ago uh, in a church. Same thing. It was a small congregation. And I remember Sister Bunker. She was a senior citizen. She was maybe 75 or 77 years old. Seemed like she got around pretty good. I, you know, had conversed very little, just hello and praise the Lord and that type of thing, you know. And, uh, but we did the same thing. We had the same type of service. And she stood at the end of the service, Sister Bunker did. I didn't know anything about her health condition. Oh, pardon me. But we prayed. And then, I don't know, we went home. The next week, maybe two weeks, I don't know, she came, she was there every service, but she stood and testified a week or two later. She, and she brought up that service that we had ministered. And, and she said, sometime before, I don't remember how long it was, six months, a year, but she had been suffering for quite a while with such severe pain in her back. Now, we're talking about a senior citizen. I love when God heals senior citizens. But she was diagnosed by the doctor some months before this with severe spinal arthritis. Sister Bunker was. Severe spinal arthritis. She said, I want you to know it's been a week or two weeks or whatever it was. And she said, I have been in constant pain. The pain never lets up. She says, but that pain is gone. God healed me a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was, she said, I'm healed. The pain is gone. Hallelujah. That's something to thank God for, isn't it? Praise the Lord. That's something to thank God for. Hit some likes there. Hit some likes there. And uh, let's send this around with sharing this video because God wants to heal somebody tonight. Now, I saw Sister Bunker all oh, several years later. How long was it? Probably... Uh, maybe two or three years later, I saw her at another church where I was visiting because they were having a fellowship service. And um, I don't know if she attended there or where she attended, but it wasn't the original church where I had preached. It was another church. But I was sitting, you know, back in the back and a few, few uh, rows from the back and Sister Bunker walks by me. I said, hey, Sister Bunker, how you doing? Oh, she looked at me. She said, well, doing good. I said, I remember a couple of years ago that you had got prayer for your, your back and that arthritis pain in your back. 
I said, how you, how you been doing with that? I said, I know the Lord healed you, but how are you now? She said, I'm having no problem. She said, I'm still healed. I'm still healed. Hallelujah. Something to thank God for. Something to praise God for. Hallelujah. So let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. 1 Peter 2.24. I hope you turn with me in the word. Turn with me in the word of God. Amen. Give us some hearts and some likes there. That'll help. Believe it or not, that's Facebook. When you do that, Facebook sees that. And then the way it's set up, it'll help this be more live uh, where others can see it. And when you comment and when you make a comment and when you share that also even increases that possibility. First Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Man, I love that verse. I love that verse. Think about it. Talking about Jesus on the cross. Dying for our sins. Then he says, by whose stripes you were. Somebody say were. Type it in. W-E-R-E. -E. Type it in there. Come on, let me see that right there. Let's type in were. We got to catch this. I want you to get it because this is going to help you tonight be healed. Now, don't matter what you have. You've got back pain, constant headaches, migraines, pain in your legs, neuropathy, blind eye, deaf ear. Makes no difference to God. God can heal anything. But Peter said, by whose stripes ye were, past tense, healed. I've got a right to say I was healed. I could have pain in my body. I can have a diagnosis that took place this morning. It didn't happen, but I'm just saying. The doctor said, you've got such and such. But I can say by the word of God, by whose stripes I was, past tense, healed. Healed by the word of God. Healed by his stripes. Healed by his stripes. Can you see that? Healed by his stripes. I've been healed by his stripes. We've got to catch that. That's past tense. See, Jesus never said, in the documentation that, oh, I'm going to heal you, except for the time in the flesh, yes. But other than that, no, never. You're not going to find it. But it's always present tense and it's past tense. All right? So we've got past tense simply means the final, it is the final decision of his will. So we say, well, I'm going to pray the will of God. This is the will of God. By his stripes, you were healed. We can't argue against that. By his stripes, you were, past tense. That is the final decision of his will. Now you know the will of God. Now you know the will of God for your, for your healing. You say, well, I wasn't sure. I, I, I don't know. Is it really God's will? Yes. By whose stripes you were when, what does that mean, past tense? When did it happen? It happened when he took that beating, and when he died upon the cross, what did he say? It is finished. When he said it is finished, everything that he did came to a final conclusion. Amen. And everything was documented. Every promise was documented. Amen. And so if we'll put our faith on it, and will believe it without wavering. He that wavereth is like a wave, you know, he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed, James says. Okay, we, we need not to stagger at the promise of God, but be strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's why you need to praise it. That's when I'll have a healing service or something. I always encourage people. After we pray, let's worship the Lord. Because you need to settle it in your spirit. I was healed. You don't feel anything. You don't walk out of the church saying, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. Praise God. I'm going to be healed. No, that's future tense. You've got to claim it as because it says here, by whose stripes you were healed. Let's go to Isaiah 53 and 4. Isaiah 53, 4. Okay. Hope you turn with me there. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Say griefs. Say it. I want you to say it. I've got a reason. Carried our sorrows. Say sorrows. Say it. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 
5, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. I could preach about peace of mind for a little while. He was chastised so that you could have peace in your mind. Amen. That's why he took that chastisement. And with his stripes, ye were, or we are, healed. And with his stripes, we are. Not future tense. Present tense. We are healed. Isaiah, speaking here, that we are healed by his stripes. And Jesus had not even given his stripes yet. He had not taken stripes yet. Jesus had not been even on earth yet in the flesh. But Isaiah saw it in the spirit, in his prophetic mind. God gave this to him. And with his stripes, we are, say it, we are healed. And say, ye were healed. There, there we are. You were, you are healed, and you was healed, okay? You say, well, I don't feel, it. You, you cannot believe what your body is telling you. You can't believe what your senses. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not what we feel. Man, you, you know the word says we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. We are healed, never future tense. We are healed right now. But you've got to claim it. You've got to believe it. You've got to set your faith. Now, I want to show you something. This is why I wanted you to grab a pen and paper. Grab your Bible. Look, look at the first, first part of four. Surely hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Look at those two words, griefs and sorrows. Griefs and sorrows. There could have been a better English translation for us. There could have, there could have been. In the original Hebrew, it says that griefs, the better Translation would have been the word sickness, sickness. Instead of griefs, he has bore our sickness and carried our sorrow. What about sorrows? Sorrows could have been translated more, uh, uh, more completely translated. A better translation would have been the word pain. Instead of sorrows, it should read like this. Surely or truly he has bore our, our sickness and carried our pain. He bear our sickness and carried our pain. I'm, I hope you're getting that because if you've got sickness in your body, if you've got pain in your body right now, I want to tell you, you don't have to carry it anymore. You don't have to bear it anymore. Nope. How do I know? How do I know? Because it says it right here. Jesus carried it for you. Jesus carried the pain. Jesus carried the pain. Jesus carried the sickness. It says it right here. That is beautiful. That is powerful. I have a right to claim what the Bible says. You, Many of you may have not known that. When I learned that, it's, it was exciting to see. Sure, we, we take a look at the word, you know, griefs and sorrows. Well, why was it? I don't know why they translated it that way. But the Hebrew says it should have been translated sickness and pain. He took your sickness and he put it on himself. He took your pain and he put it on himself and he began to carry it. Why? So you don't have to carry it anymore. Praise God. Praise God. It already happened, church. Listen, brothers and sisters, it already happened. You're already healed. That's right. All you have to do is claim it now, believe it without wavering, and it will come to pass. If I had the time, I'll do it one of these days probably, but I could tell you how I was healed going back, oh my, back in the late 80s or 90s. I I, I had a situation, and I, oh boy, it would take me some time to tell that. I won't do that now. Maybe we'll just have a testimony night. and We'll do that. But uh, you've got to confess it. You've got to believe it. When you confess it and you believe it, expect it, expect it, and look for it to manifest. Can you say that? I am healed. Can, I mean, I'm not with you and I can't hear you. But why don't you say, because the confession of the mouth is so powerful. 
I am healed. If you've got a sickness in your body, if you've got pain in your body, name it right now. In Jesus' name, I am healed. You've got to be bold enough to say it out loud. I am healed of such and such. That begins the process. That begins the process. The problem is, like I said, we waver in our faith. And you cannot waver and expect to receive from the Lord. Again, did Jesus ever say no to somebody? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he never said no. He said, well, I don't know if it's the will of God. Jesus never said no. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. He's not going to say no to you. Your faith wraps your arms around Jesus and you capture the promise. Oh, he loves that. You know, uh, somebody told me yesterday, uh, um, an older person that's on Social Security, they, they told me that they had got their $1,200 from Uncle Sam. And, uh, you know, that government money that they're paying out. Some of you maybe have got it. But do you believe, if you haven't got it, do you believe it's coming? I got mine. Now, let's say you got notice that it was deposited into your account. Okay? Maybe you opened up your account online or your the app on your phone or whatever. Oh, there it is, $1,200. Maybe you and a spouse, $2,400. Wow, beautiful. When you saw it there, did you believe it? Did you believe it enough to use it to pay some bills? If you haven't got it yet, will you believe it enough to pay some bills? Or are you going to drive over to the bank? And went, oh, oh, it's there. Oh, here's my phone here. Uh, I'm going to check here and see. There it says it, but I don't know if I believe it. Oh, I'm going to I'm bank at Chase. I'm going to go over there. Hey, I got a notice that says the $1,200 is in my account. I just want to see it. Can you show it to me? Oh, I just want to know for sure. Is that what you're going to do? You're not going to do that. You're going to believe it without a shadow of a doubt. You're going to believe it so much, you're going to begin to swipe that debit card. You're going to believe it so much that you're going to go make a withdrawal. You're going to believe it so much that you're going to write checks on that. You're going to use that money because you have faith in the United States government because they said they were going to do it, and you know others. Just like you know other people that have got healed, why doubt the Lord now when there's nothing more sure than the word of God? Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Praise the Lord. Can somebody say amen? God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to take too much more time here because I want to pray for you. But you know, it says in, you can read this with me. Uh, Acts 19, Acts 19, get that Acts 19. But, you know, I was thinking, too, um, you know, here in northwest Indiana, there's not really any farms, so to speak. I mean, few little, you know, small areas that people are using for gardens and things like that. But there's not a whole lot going on here unless you drive out about 45 minutes or an hour. Maybe south, you might run into some farms down I-65. And you that live here, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, take that farmer. Take that farmer in the spring, and he digs up the ground with his tractor, his machinery. And he, he digs out and furrows, you know. And then he comes back, and he plants that seed in the ground. He plants that seed in the ground. Covers it up with dirt, covers it up, goes home, sweaty and dirty, takes a shower, sits down to a nice dinner. Do you think he's sitting there at the dinner table wondering if that seed is going to produce anything? Do you think in a couple of weeks or a couple of months that he's going to go over there and dig up that seed to see what it's doing? Or do you think he has confidence and a steadfast faith that for sure that seed is going to produce a crop? I want to tell you something tonight. If you believe the word of God without fail, the seed of the word of God, the Bible that promised 
that's documented to you and I will come to pass. God will do it. Claim it now. You are healed by his stripes. You are already healed, but you've got to take on that money could be in your account. Yeah. It, 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 it's rightfully yours. The government gave you that money. But wouldn't it be crazy? If you just put that checkbook away and maybe you just shred the checks and maybe you took that debit card and you put it in a shredder as well. And for years, that money just sat there. You never used it. Never really believed that it was there. Never believed that it was there. That's not going to happen. Because you have a faith. You reach for that light switch, you believe that that light's going to come on. You don't think about it. What if our faith could be like that? And it can. Our faith can be like that tonight. Your faith can be like that tonight where you receive a miracle right here on Facebook Live. That's right. In Jesus' name. Acts 19.11. Look at that. Acts 19.11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought under the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases, uh, diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Hmm. What did God do? God wrought, made special, gave special miracles by the hands of Paul. Paul had handkerchiefs, it says, on his body, eight aprons that he carried around. And people that could not be there with him for him to anoint them with oil. For them him to lay hands on them was is what the Bible teaches. But when they were not there, people had relatives that were in other cities, or maybe back at home where Paul was, maybe he could not go. And he would take these handkerchiefs and he would take these ap aprons that he had on his person, and he would give these out. So the family members could take this apron, this handkerchief, to this loved one that was dying or possessed with a spirit or someone that was very sick, could not get up, could not go anywhere because of their condition. And God would heal. God would heal them and deliver them. Amen. Uh, Brother Verbal Bean, he's dead and gone now. This happened with him, and you know we've done this as well, but I want to tell this as a, a wonderful example here, what happened with Brother Bean. He was preaching a camp meeting service, is what it's called in the South. They used to call them that. They call them conferences now. But uh, he was called upon to preach this service, and he preached a miracle service, and people lined up for prayer, and they prayed for one by one. He prayed for them. One lady came up and said, I have a sister that is in the hospital. My sister is dying of cancer. She is skin and bones. They've given her a short time to live. She cannot get up. She's hooked up to all kinds of stuff and she is, she is, she's dying. She won't live long. She's very thin. I want you to pray for her, she said. Brother Bean got a handkerchief out and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, he said, take this to your sister and put it on her body. And when you do, she's going to be healed. She's going to be healed in Jesus' name. And she was not saved, and she wanted her to be saved. And he said, she's going to be saved. She's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and she's going to be healed when you do that. That sister went to that hospital, and she took that to that her own physical sister, her, 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 her sister in the flesh, took that handkerchief to that hospital bed where she was, Handkerchief. Brother Bean didn't go. He couldn't go. No. But there is power that's transferred, and there is power and anointing that's being transferred right now over this Facebook Live. I said, you can be healed. You can be healed. Somebody type amen. Amen. Let's give us an amen right now in Jesus' name. She touched her with that handkerchief. That sister came up out of that bed shouting and dancing 
filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave her the utterance, and completely healed of that cancer. Now, how did that happen? Because of faith in what God said through the little means of a handkerchief or an apron that Paul gave forth. Just a point of contact. And tonight we've got a point of contact here with sight and speech through this media. And we're going to pray here in just, just a moment. I was preaching in Kentucky one time and again, preaching on faith. And we, and um, I remember what sticks out in my mind. I came home after that service and there was a testimony about two weeks later and I remember this sister sitting in the very back of the church. She had a big thing on her foot, um, some kind of a cast. And during the service, I said, anyone that wants to be healed, stand up. Stand up, and we're going to pray. She didn't stand up. I wanted her to stand up. I, I didn't know she was believing. I didn't know she believed what I said or not. She didn't stand up. I don't know. She. I assume she could stand. She didn't stand. She didn't. But about two weeks later, I got word that her she got that foot checked out, that ankle, whatever that was wrong there, that was fractured, and God healed that fracture. God healed that woman's foot. Hallelujah. That was her testimony. That was her testimony. Nobody touched her. Nobody touched her. But she received faith by the spoken word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. She received faith, and tonight you have received faith. Praise the Lord. And I know if I could have you testify tonight, some of you have received such miracles in the past, but tonight is a new night. This is a new time right now. Under this COVID-19, we're not able to meet up and lay hands on. Let me tell you that God will let us improvise, and God will let us pray. Amen. And he will honor that prayer and he will honor that faith tonight. Amen. I want you to name your condition right now that you're claiming healing of. Man, name it. Blind eye, deaf ear, tumor, cyst, polyp. I, I can give you testimony after testimony. I could just give a whole hour easily of testimonies of healings. And they just come into my mind, but I, I won't take the time to do that. But we're going to pray right now. I want you to think about what you're going to be healed of, what you're going to claim, because you're already healed by his stripes. We read it. With his stripes, you were healed, past tense. By his stripes, you are healed, present tense. We read that. Present tense and past tense. You are healed. I am healed. Now, don't misunderstand. We're not denying pain. We're not denying that there's a condition there. We're not, that's not what we're doing. That's what some religions do. That's not what we're doing. But we're believing that faith is over matter, that faith is over and surpasses our understanding. Faith can do anything because God honors faith. All right, in Jesus' name, we're going to pray. I want you to put your hand on the ailment of your body. If you've got a knee problem, you've got arthritis in your knees. I want you to put your hands on your knees. If you're having headaches, I want you to reach up and put your hand on your head. You got arthritis in your hands. You got arthritis in your legs. Some people, I talked to a lady the other day, she said she had arthritis all over her body. A client of mine, arthritis, she, her back is in so much pain, but she feels this pain all over her body. Amen. It doesn't matter what it is. Jesus didn't rush to get to Lazarus. He wasn't intimidated by his sickness. He didn't get on his camel and go as fast as he could before he died. He waited till he was dead four days. Death is no more than a sickness to Jesus. He can heal anything. Amen. When somebody believes. All right. You've got your hand on your ailment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against every sickness. I come against every pain. I come against disease and the spirit of infirmity. And I bind it in the name of Jesus. Everyone listening to me right now, through this live Facebook, 
even in the future on this recording, when people watch this, I claim their healing. I lose healing upon them right now in Jesus' name by the promise and by the documentation of the word of God that they were already healed when Jesus said it is finished. And I bind the sickness. I bind the disease. I command the pain to stop. I command the pain to stop right now in Jesus' name. Pain, stop in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to lift your hands and let's love the Lord together. Come on. Let's love him. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. God, I magnify your name. I thank you for healing. I thank you for the word. I thank you for, I don't have to beg for it because it's already documented. It's already in my account. It's already been deposited. It's mine. All I have to do is flip the switch of faith and claim it in Jesus. And I'm not going to be healed. I'm healed right now. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Come move yourself around and feel uh, if, if you've got a headache, come on, move yourself around a little bit. If you've got pain in your arm, come on, move that around a little bit. If you've got pain in your feet, pain in your legs, or pain in your back, get up and move around a little bit. Test how you feel, because I believe somebody was healed right now, right now. I believe somebody has been healed by the power of the name of Jesus. Somebody has claimed their healing. They have seen the documentation. They saw it. They saw it in the word of God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship the Lord. Go ahead and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, I give you the praise. I give you the praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I cannot see your comments if you're commenting. Amen. A little glitch here. But uh, I trust tonight. I want you to. I want you to go ahead and post. You feel a touch in your body right now. I want you to post it. Amen. If the headache is gone or you feel even a change, it has led up. I, I'm just giving an example, a hypothetical. I don't know what you're dealing with. But you know that you're healed. You believe that you're healed. Put something in the comments for others to be encouraged in their faith. Amen. That's, that's right. Because... I, I could. All right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to see if I can get on here and I want to be able to see whatever might be going on. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you feel any feel any healing right now? Praise God. Praise God. Hey, we're just going by the word of the Lord. Amen. That's all we're doing. If you don't believe it, guess what? It'll never happen for you. It'll never happen for you. But for you that believe it, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, when you feel that change, it may not be immediate. Amen. It might be tomorrow when you feel better. Feel a change in your body, but expect it. Send me a message. I would love to help and just spread your testimony. I, I, I know I'm not the healer. I can't do it. Jesus is still a healer. Jesus is still a miracle worker. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He's still the healer. He's still the miracle worker. And I rejoice in that fact. I rejoice in that tonight. And I know you are rejoicing as well. Amen. Well, we would love to see you out with us. Uh, we want you to know about Christian Revival Center. Christian Revival Center in Maryville, Indiana. We would love to have you with us. Churches are going to resume hopefully shortly. Amen. And uh, we are just believing that God is going to do mighty things there as we gather together again. So praise the Lord. Spread this around. Give your testimony what God has done, what God has done. We thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. And you pray for us. We'll pray for you until next week. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name.